Hello friends, hello and welcome. We have got a little special episode or show, I don't know what this is called. Actually, Spirit wants to talk to us about the next couple of weeks uh, that will lead up to the Lionsgate portal. So, hey I don't know. <laughs> I try to recreate this picture in picture thing with my mirror that I did on the other table, but it's just not the same. It just doesn't do it exactly the same magical way. But anyway, I am going to put this up on the podcast too, so you can listen. But if you want to see the cards or whatever, join us over on YouTube. Uh, we haven't done a whole, we've been doing stuff and it's inadvertently kind of been for Lionsgate. It hasn't been an actual like Lionsgate series, like typical, but we're going to get some cards out and let Spirit speak to us about the next couple of weeks. I'm recording this on July 23rd. We've just entered Leo season today. It's all systems go. If you're watching the daily shorts, it's time to get going on whatever. Um, hmm. time to get going. Grab yourself something to drink. I have my green tea, iced tea lemonade. And we have got them. It's not so warm today, but it's very smoky here. Wildfires <laughs> uh, wreaking havoc again. We're now, we're in the, I don't even know what the little air quality index. We're about halfway in the middle of it in terms of the unhealthy for and it's still not as bad as last year. I, I see it in the distance, which means it is in the air around me. But last year, it was like fog outside the window. <laughs> bad. So this isn't still, this isn't too, too bad. All right. So I have been calling in. Um, I know others of you are experiencing weird stuff too in terms of the air quality. So I have been calling in the sylphs and asking them to help um, transmute the air outside for everybody and for myself too because when I go out there you know um, last year really wreaked havoc on my respiratory system it's kind of bad but I went out there anyway because I was like I'm sorry I gotta get outside I still gotta walk my dog I still gotta do all these things life continues so we're gonna do this with cards today we're gonna see what spirit wants to speak to us about about the next couple of weeks as I wrap us all in love light and light love Inviting the guides who overlight TLC for the soul, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, the Pleiadians, my host of many TLC for the soul guides. Um, let's see. I am. Let's see. Let's. I don't even know where to start. Let's see. Where do you want me to start, Spirit? <laughs> They're like, just get a card and keep going. All right. The next couple of weeks. So. Um, why is this important? Why do you want to talk to us? Like, what's so important about the next couple of weeks? Oh, there's a card that's in here backwards. Oh. Hmm. There's a card that's in here backwards, and the other one came out. So the backwards card, meaning it was flipped over, is the high priestess with listen. And the one that came out with it is card number 17, Heal. I believe this is the star card. Let me check. So we're going to work off of these two. 17 and card number 2. Listen and Heal. Uh, let's see. This is the Psychic Tarot of the Heart. And if you're following some of the other stuff that we're doing, and even if you're not, there's a big heart. Um, there's a big kind of there's work being done right now to open the heart. So energetically and in the astrology, things are happening. Um, there's Chiron in retrograde. There's other things going on um, to help humanity open its heart more to each other, they're saying. Um, hence this heal card. I think 17, yeah is the star. I offer and accept healing in my relationships. This is a kind of a relationship based deck, but, and I am at peace. Keywords, forgive, offer, receive, serenity, hope, 
inspiration, a peaceful healing energy surrounds you right now. This is an ideal time to bring healing to your relationships and to realize your hopes and dreams. Understand that no human being can ever be perfect. By accepting this, you're in a position to forgive yourself and those with whom you're involved. And then card number two is the High Priestess. I honor myself by being present and truly listening to the messages I hear. Listening starts with becoming quiet, centered, and totally present, involving many senses, not just your ears. Use your eyes to see the body language of another person. Use your ears to hear not only words spoken, but also the tone used to express them. Use your intuition to get a sense of what the person is really saying and feeling. Intuition often helps you hear what is not said as well as what is said. I don't know where I said this. I've recorded so many shows now over the past three or four days. Um, but somewhere I was saying it's time right now. Maybe it was in the Almost Daily Short for like more, more, more saying yes, more, you know, say, say yes to the dress. Say yes to more heartfelt conversations. Say um, yes to opening your heart more. Um, oh, the text. Okay, yeah. So yesterday we did the um, Week Ahead reading on Patreon. And if you're not familiar with Patreon, it's like another cool platform for creators. Um, it's membership based. And um, we have a Bringers of the Light Patreon over there. Um, so it's a nice, sacred, small container for people who really want to be there. Um, the energy I find is much more potent and powerful when it's a closed container rather than when it's somewhere like social media and the container is very open. The boundaries are very open for everybody. Um, the, the energy is much more powerful whenever you're, you know, whenever you're in some sort of like closed workshop or sacred space like that. But anyway, that's digressing. Um, and now see, I totally lost track of where I was going. Oh, the text message. Thank you. Yesterday in the card reading, we talked about the boundaries of the heart need to be loosened a little bit. That's what Spirit's working on us with. And I think that's going to continue through Lion's Gate and beyond. Um, but it's, it's playing out heavily right now where these um, situations are coming up, giving you opportunities to do just that. So after I did the card reading yesterday, I did a... Um, oh, Spirit is showing me in the trunk of the tree outside the window. It's like a cat's face. Oh, okay. So the familiars too. Uh, that's our unicorn portal tree. This text message came through yesterday after I recorded this episode about, you know, say yes, open your heart more, you know, have more fun. This text message comes through that says, do you want to drive to the beach tomorrow and have lunch? And my first reaction was like, oh, heck yeah, <laughs> most definitely. Of course, it's a wrong number. I don't know who it's from. And I, I told Nyoka, I'm like, look up the area code. Where is it from? And he's like, it's from um, California, north of San Francisco. And I have never let go of my um, California tel uh, cell phone number. I still have a California um, area code. I still have an LA area code and all that. I love my phone number. And so I'm not, I didn't want to change it to, you know, local or whatever. I didn't want that area code. So um, I was like, so you, right, you get a wrong number text message. And it's like, I could have just been like, delete, you know, or wrong numbers, you know, wrong number or whatever. And instead, I responded, I'm like, let's have fun with this and see where this goes. Because this, I didn't, you know, is this an opportunity to open my heart more? And so I said, I really do want, I, I said, most definitely. So I, I responded like, yeah, I sure would love to go to the beach for lunch. Uh, however, I don't know who this is. And then the person responded like, oh, Tina, it's Isabella or something. I'm, I lost my phone and this is my business number. And I'm like, hi, Isabella. This is the response. Hi, Isabella. Um, you have the wrong number. And then Isabella comes back and says, Oh, I'm so sorry. Can you forgive my mistake? Like it was just this horrible thing. And so we have this little text conversation going for a few little text messages. 
Um, and she's like, oh, I can feel your kindness from here. I hope you, you know, good luck to you in your life. Or, you know, just something. It didn't have to be like turn into a big old thing. And then I sent a little heart emoji and that was it. But I mean, typically I would have been like, oh, wrong. I, I would have probably just deleted it or said if they kept texting, I probably would have said you have the wrong number. But I thought this is so funny because I really did want to go to the beach and have some lunch. I was like, oh, this is crazy. So in this case, I think over the next couple of weeks, there's going to be big more opportunities to heal and more opportunities to have those heartfelt, um, deep conversations with people where you don't necessarily have to do all the talking. You can listen to what's being said and then just choose, you know, how to respond very carefully. You're the, you're the mass, you're the self mastery person. I think here, um, and whatever's going on around you, you're the one that's um, done all the work. You're the one that, that comes from the place of power. And you can choose how you want to use that power. My little heart fell down on the floor. There. All right, next two weeks, Spirit, what else do you want to show us? This is Mystic Martian. Well, it's nice I can see my own hands shamily in the camera. Oh, this is crazy. Oh, Tao Setians. Yes. 21. Resilient, bold, and sassy. Uh, this is all about Leo season. I think it's going to be fast-paced. I think it's going to be fiery. Um, if you need to work on your sacral chakra, now is the time to do it. Um, and it doesn't always have to be, you know... Um, the other day I was like, oh, I think my sacral chakra needs some work, right? And so I put on like a yin yoga sacral chakra video. And I'm like, no, I'm not really trying to act. I don't know what I'm trying to do, but I, it just seemed too basic. It's like the sacral, the chakra is already activated. But it's more like, what are you going to do with that energy? You just saw 1144. Because it's not just, you know, the sex center or whatever. It's the creativity center too. It's a water elemental being, the sacral chakra. And so I was like, I want to do yin yoga for this sacral chakra. It's already open. I want to do something with the energy that's there. And so, you know, instead I went and did my, I'm doing like a, for myself, I'm doing a 30 days of art series where I just get into procreate and, and channel in a little art piece every day for 30 days. And um, it's probably going to be the next um, Oracle deck that I put out will be all my own um, artwork. Um, we'll see though, because I'm slow, I'm just super slow working on it um, as to how I want to do it um, and just trying to enjoy the creative process more so than just the production of a deck. Because I have quite a few decks out there now. Um, there's many of them and I'm, I guess I'm going to decide too, like what do I want to do with all those decks? Who's staying and who's going? Or I'm still not sure um, yet exactly what's happening with the whole deck production process. Um, what decks live where right now they're all on the game crafter, but, um, I think there's going to, you know, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, so I'm working on my next Oracle deck for us, for all of us to play with. All right. So sacral chakra, bold and sassy. Hmm. All right. What about the Lemurian Star Child Oracle? Because you're not, I think they're just kind of giving us like what are the energies that are out there. And I do get us, I do feel like the past roads to Lion, Lionsgate we've done have been a ton of like healing work, like the years past. You know, this channel's been around, it'll be seven years in October. And pretty much almost every year we did a Road to Lionsgate series. And it was a lot, a lot of healing work. And this is more like, you know, sit back and it, you, you mastered many of these things now. And you're not so deep in the shadow work anymore. Yeah, you're still doing work on yourself. You're still opening your heart and all that. But it's not major deep shadow work anymore. Um, not, you know, every single day like it had, had been. And so now it's like you can enjoy the fruits of your labors. You don't have to be so deep doing that work and your, your options are opening up to do more things. So, you know, you want to do a art piece, you want to record a video, you want to do something creative, you want to have a conversation with somebody, you know, the options are just open. The energy is very open and available to just have fun, enjoy, enjoy where you're at, enjoy the moment. Um, the next card that came out from 
the Lemurian star child is, ooh, um, card number three, Storm. Hmm, this is quite interesting. Um, there's like a, it's, it's all purple and pink and some turquoise, like the throat chakra, but, hmm, the throat chakra is very highly activated in this card. Um, the eyes, and there's like a brilliant light just coming down from the cosmos, down through the crown, through the third eye, through the Ajna Chakra. Hmm. What's this storm card all about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit. My backyard. I'm still working on this landscaping project, but it's been so hot and humid. It's not been hot. It's just been super humid. And I have like stuff strewn all over the yard. You can kind of see some of it. I'm using like old artificial turf that they had in here, like the fake grass for something else. That, and I'm putting it in a different location up front in this area that I'm playing with. Is this me right here? Oh, look, here I am. Hi, you can see my hand. Um, let's have Archangel Michael come in. He's the last deck that kind of wanted to be part of this whole thing. What's going on with a storm card? Hmm. What are we doing for this next couple of weeks? Uh, open up to your spiritual gifts. Card number three. Oh, it's three, three. Oh, three, three, three. Open up to your spiritual gifts is card number 21. Storm is card number three. And look, so Tau Set, I can never say their name right. Setians is also card number 21. 21, 21. 21, 21. All right, I'm going to rearrange these a little bit. Okay, so two things here. Um, spiritual gifts are very sensitive and more coming online right now. Um, it's a very heightened time of um, psychic activity, I guess, is the, for the word for it. Um, yesterday, I was sitting there and I start, when I started to hear kind of like weird words in my head, like weird channeling, um, I go to spirit and I'm like, what's going on here? That's not coming from me. And spirit's like, no, you need to clear your astral body. You need to be very, um, you need to step away right now as much as you can from being out on social media and all that because your, your light body is very sensitive right now and you're just kind of absorbing some, you know, stuff from the collective. And so I was like, well, let's clear that because I didn't like how that was sounding. Um, and then in that same vein of being, you know, very psychically sensitive right now and maybe spirit, more spiritual gifts coming online. And this story is so interesting because um, I was going downstairs to meet my son downstairs in the kitchen and I happened to go to the top of the stairs. And when I go to the top of the stairs, I can see all the way across into my room where one of my mirrors is at on the table. And when I looked at it, I was like, someone's in that mirror. Um, it looks like a man's face and then um, I was like who is that because I couldn't I was kind of far away and I couldn't really recognize but I'm like I don't recognize that face at all but I could see eyes and like a nose and a face I'm like oh that's so interesting is someone astral projecting into my mirror and I kind of like not quite but kind of and so I just kind of left it at that and I went downstairs and as I went downstairs my son was standing in the living room and he's looking around he's like I just saw something white like swoosh by and I'm like you mean outside And he's like no in this room like a vision or a spirit or something like a you know like a ghost was white and it just kind of went from this part of the room to that part of the room and we we're like oh my god we both saw something you know peek through the veil at the same pretty much the same exact time and I told him well it's nothing ominous in this house because this house is highly enchanted and highly protected so we sat down and we got the pendulum out and we're like who's here you know what what's up and we we figured out who it was and all that it was like you know different beings for each one of us for me and for him but, um, you know, pay attention to what you're seeing because he saw that, you know, out of the corner of his eye. He's like, oh, my God, I saw that. And then he wasn't freaked out or anything. He's like, what was that? Who is that? And I'm like, well, let's explore who it is. You know, we don't have to 
not know who it is. Um, if it's around you and it's around me, via the law of attraction, it's nothing malevolent um, because we're only of the light. We're not going to be attracting um, dark beings. Uh, with that being said, though, so we did, we got to the bottom of that. It was a really fun and very nice and loving experience. On the flip side of that, however, was this other experience that night before I went into the astrals. And this is not the first time this has happened over the past couple of months or so. A, a couple of times spirit has taken me into the darker realms. They know I don't want to be there. Um, but that last night, not last night, the night before, um, I went into the dark realms again and I had to deal with beings that were working with demonic possession. I mean, very scary stuff. And in the dreams, when this happens, these beings approach me and, you know, I don't know what they're going on about. Like, we're going to possess you or you are possessed or I'm possessed or, you know, I'm working with beings that are not nice. And in the dream, I'm always throwing up my hands and doing, you know, like the, through in the violet fire and calling in Archangel Michael. And so yesterday, oh, my crown is really activated right now. And calling in Archangel Michael. And so I don't know if this is happening for you, but here's what they told me. Because I'm driving yesterday with my son and I was like, I gotta need to get to the bottom of these dreams. Because I don't like, I woke up really scared. I was like, I don't like this. It's scary. It's like a nightmare. And then it took me a minute to like, you know, ground and figure out like, okay, that was just somewhere where I was at. You know, it's not anything that's here with me in the house. And um, I asked Archangel Michael, I'm like, well, what is going on here? You know, I don't like going to those places. And he's like, there's opportunities right now for advanced um, bringers of the light, spiritual light workers to go into the darker realms and do some magical healing work. Um, to dispel some of this darkness. And I said, I don't really want to be there. And they're like, we need advanced practitioners like you and others, not just me, but those of you that have uh, have worked on mastering um, some of your, you know, some of your skills of transmuting dark energy. I'm getting big chills, transmuting, you know, darkness into light, um, be working along with Archangel Michael and other teams. He's not the only one, but teams of light that are down in the darker realms and they're like, you know, I said, do I have to do this? And they're like, no, but we would really, really want you to be there. And I'm like, I don't want to do this all the time. And he's talking to me even now. He's like, understood, you know, but can we pull you in periodically? And I'm like, uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, as long as it doesn't become too many, too many times. Um, and maybe, you know, and, and he's like, if you, as you open your heart more, you won't, it won't matter anymore. You'll just go down there and you won't be scared because you'll have so much light emanating from your heart space that it will automatically dispel any darkness around you. It'll be like um, you won't have to do anything. You'll just have to show up, basically. You won't have to throw up your hands. You won't have to call on Arch Archangel Michael. You'll just be down there. Yeah, this is the benefit of the open heart. You'll just be down there down there. I say down there, but I don't know, around there. You'll be in these darker realms and you'll just basically have to show up and they will use you. They, the um, Archangel Michael, his warriors of light, the other, you know, any other beings that are down there helping, um, like our bringers of the light HQ agents. Um, did something bite me? You just keep itching. Uh, you'll be down there and you'll just be being used as like a beacon of light and you just kind of have to just be there and show up. That's what they keep saying. So those opportunities are available. Yeah, sure. I want to help out. <laughs> so, you know, they've been slowly like they've like, we've been slowly showing you and they've been like, they, they told me it was like a test run. Like, we're going to see how you do. If you don't fare well down there, then you need to come up, you need to come back from that and do more work. But they're like, you did okay. You could do better. Um, keep working on the heart space. Keep working on, um, you know, being a being of light, just keep doing your soul work. And um, that will get easier if you want to volunteer to do that. Now, what does it mean to volunteer to do that? It doesn't, just doesn't mean you're going down and you're being like, you know, a worker bee. Um, good karma comes from doing service work. You want to build your karmic banks, your positive karmic banks, then you look for ways to serve. And this would be another option that's available um, that's not a 3D, necessarily something in the 3D that you have to do. You just got to go to bed and go 
do some light work somewhere. All right, we're going on 24 minutes, so three, three, three. So yeah, I think we're being very heavily guided and guarded right now through Lionsgate and obviously beyond anybody that's a bringer of the light, anybody that's listening here, um, very important soul missions and soul, um, soul paths, uh, get extra attention from the powers of be up in the etheric realms. And so you get the benefit of having more guides around you, more guidance, um, quicker response time, they're saying. Um, now, what does that mean? They're saying you ask for something and it's given. You need help. The help's going to come right away. Um, you need you need your finances improved. Someone's going to show up and improve them. Are we talking about over the next couple of weeks or forever and always? They're saying bringers of the light right now are highly activated and you're getting the rewards for a job well done as well as special attention from the higher realms. They're here to help you with your goals. No one's ever just left, I think, to hang out and dry, hang out to dry. I think there's some people right now that are not necessarily part, they're a bringer of the light, but they're not necessarily part of TLC for the soul too, who are having a really hard time right now. And um, yeah, if we could hold space for some of those people that are kind of in our inner circle, but not necessarily part of this community, those people need some extra attention right now um, in terms of, um, you know, can you, can you just focus some prayers on them? Maybe set up a little grid for them to help support them energetically. Uh, even though we know that based on our, our self-mastery of our path, that things will end up fine. I think there's some some of our bringers of the light community not watching these videos or listen to this podcast, but they're part of your circle somehow, part of your, not necessarily your super inner circle, but they're right very close to your inner circle of, of family and friends who need some extra support right now. Um, even if you don't directly contact, I mean, typically you wouldn't directly, con I just feel it. I feel it and I know it because I have someone like that. And if I have someone like that, then you have someone like that. And this person is, um, yeah, these people, these people are kind of having a hard time right now because it's a, it's a very critical juncture point in their journey and they don't see it coming yet. They don't see that the relief of what they're going through is like right around the corner, but they're at a place of a very low, like mental and emotional state. You've been there before, you know. So um, whatever we can do to energetically support them. Um, and if you don't have anybody like that, then then just reach out, you know, to whoever it might be, uh, just create a container of all those people that are close to my, that need, you know, uh, putting them in this special place. And, um, w I don't think we have to ask for anything. Cause I think sometimes as earth angels, we want to step in and, uh, hold on. I gotta see what's happening here. Got these people that walk into my yard. Oh, what the heck? Okay. I gotta see what's happening here. Oh, he's definitely in the wrong space. He's like, Nope, that's not the trail. It's a, it's a guy. He just walked into my yard because I have this old trailhead at the edge of my yard. And it's a trail that people really aren't supposed to be going down, but they still do. But then there's another trailhead about, I don't know how many yards, 50 yards up. That's the actual trailhead that people are, the marked trailhead that people are supposed to be going down. So this one that's right by my house is one where, you know, sometimes people gather. No, I don't, people don't gather there, but people who want to be adventurous try to go through there. He's clearly lost. He looks like he's following the, you know, the Google maps with the steps where you walk. This is, this is the analogy to what I'm talking about right now. The one that you put on the walking one, it's like, you know, 60 steps to the next juncture point. Okay. So he's trying to go down that trail and I've never seen him before. He looks a little lost buddy it's over there 
Uh, so these are the people I'm talking about. These are the people that are a little lost. They're trying to follow this map. I think they're trying to be really 3D and um, because they're kind of so down, they can't necessarily see the spiritual side of things. So um, these are other extra assignments that you can do over the next couple of weeks because I feel like there's a turning point coming up um, around the next full moon, they're saying. Um, between now and the next full moon, so that's 30 days out, um, some of these people on the outskirts of our circles are going to have these big turning points, but they can't see it right now. I think they really need some extra support energetically um, to help pull them, pull them through. So Spirit's already giving you a, examples and ideas of ways that you can be of service. I've got a third one coming up. Um, if anybody's interested, I can send you the link. I don't know where it's at right now, but I got an email yesterday. I have, I'm have i a part of um, Shamans Without Borders or Shamanism Without Borders, um, and they have many calls to action, and I just cannot get to them all, but the one that stood out to me, and a lot of them are like um, world events, you know, and we'll show up, and we'll do a journey, and we'll do stuff like, you know, help, pe help pass on, you know, anybody that's lost, lost their uh, physical body as a result of this and has crossed over, we help them cross over to the other side. We, we work with the nature elementals if there's any type of natural disaster. But the one that's coming up this Thursday is um, for the wildfires. I'm very curious. So we, we, it's a Zoom call. We join and a shaman, a one of their, you know, their people um, as part of their group um, will lead us in some sort of a... Uh, journey or something or energy work to go help out and so I'm, I'm quite curious how we're going to approach this one for the wildfires and it's definitely something that affects my area and everybody around and I think others of you in other parts of especially if you're from the United States the U.S. Um, you're experiencing something similar as well I can't speak for other parts of the world but you know there's always some sort of natural thing and unnatural thing happening um, so it's another way to be of service. So I'm going to try to join that call. And there is a recording of that, but you, there's nothing you have to pay. I think you just have to sign up for the calls to action. And you just have to sign up once. And then anytime there's a Shamans Without Borders call to action, they will send you an email and let you know. Um, it's usually like a three or four days in advance and let you know that that's coming up. All right, let's see. We're going to get one last card. What do you want to say? Back to the Martians deck. Very star seedy. Alright, what's our final card for the next couple of weeks? Oh, two cards. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh, um, card number two. 32, Kabbalah, the Tree of Life, Integration. Oh, here we go. Life Lessons and Emanation came out with car another 12. We've got 21, 21, 3. Now we've got 12, which is another 3. Mantis Beings, Enigma, Elusive, and Sensitive. All right, this is pretty much everything we've just talked about. Um, right now, over the next couple of weeks... Um, you are integrating a lot of work that's been done. Uh, look for more, more opening. I think the more the heart opens, it's just going to start happening. The opportunities are just going to show up for it to do it. It's not like you have to sit there and be like, I need an open heart. I'm going to like work on stretching my heart space. There is work you have to do, which is saying yes to whatever these, um, divinely guided opportunities are that are coming in for you, um, that are going to help you open your heart space. Um, this integration work, life lessons. I think we're, we're like in this, you know, this celebratory lion's, it's just like a celebratory lion's gate. Um, one where you can sit back and just like, you know, take a bow and be like, man, you know, over the past, who knows how long we've been working on this, you know, I've really done a great job. Um, be proud of who you are. Be proud of what you've done. Be proud, uh, you know, have self-confidence in how far you've come on this journey and just know, you know, like this mantis beings, I think it is all about, you know, your psychic senses. He's out there. There's a moon. Um, <laughs> oh, enigmas. 
look around you, notice what's coming up, enjoy the journey, have fun with it. You know, you guys know the drill by now. It seems like for us in this circle, it's almost like um, we've graduated to a um, the next level of the wizarding world. <laughs> you know, we want to put a Harry Potter theme on it. We want to go to Potter and have a Harry Potter theme. We've grown, graduated to the next level of the wizarding world. And we get to kind of, uh, this, is, this is parent guidance too, we get to enjoy the fruits of our labors, which is um, now we get to be the ones lighting the way, showing the way, leading the way, um, working from a higher level of magic and um, clarity and divine perspective and divine assignments are going to be shifting and changing very soon, they're saying. So you're in prep mode right now in that you're, you've, you've got some downtime to be able to enjoy the fruits of your labors, what, what's around you, how far you've come, and then um, assignments are going to be taking off. Um, when? Mi they're like middle of next month or so. It's kind of different. There, it seems like there's various um, time frames coming in because everybody's not on the same thing. So just, just, just know it's coming. Definitely before the end of the year, they're saying. All right, friends. Well, that is all we have for you. So I hope you enjoy playing with us here this magical time. As all you can see is this top of my head right now. If you're watching this, I still want to work on this freaking mirror angle. I think I may have to bring it down a little bit. Like right there where my little colorful tapes are at. All right, friends. That is all we have for you. I hope you enjoyed this. And we will see you all again soon. Take care.